Hi folks, Colin, MM0OPX. Um, I need to make up a new feed point for my Moxon project, so I thought it was worthwhile making a video um, just how I'm going to do that, because um, if you're going to do the same, then it may give you some uh, ideas. Um, so this is the existing feed point, and it's just got a single um, a single element on it for, for 20 metres. Um, you can see that I've changed wires because I had to change the length, so I just, that's what I've done. So basically, there's the 50 ohm coax, it's held with these cable ties, um, and it's just soldered directly to the coax and um, this black stuff is a uh, liquid electrical tape um, fantastic stuff, it gives a completely um, waterproof seal um, so yeah, so it, it, it works what, what I've done um, but I would, and because um, I've shortened the wire this um, the coax cable, the coax length is actually too short um, so I don't want to just put a connector, a barrel connector or something on this um, so I'm going to redo it now I'm going to make do with the things that I have to hand um, so you, you may have different items or different bits of material that, that, that will allow you to get this job done but um, yeah, as I say I'm just going to make do so this is in essence what I'm making or going to remake um, but I would I like to um, make this a tri-band uh, at some point so I want to make it tri-band ready um, so these are little templates that I've, that I've had made up um, um, and what I'm going to do, you'll see it, I'm going to stick it onto a bit of plastic I've got in a minute um, with some what we call, we call it Pritt stick, some glue, kids glue um, so I'm basically going to stick this onto the bit of plastic and these holes are going to be drilled at different diameters so these three, um, uh, these three and these three these will be approximately three millimeters, two and a half, three millimeters, and these are for the elements that will be like um, 20, 15, and 10. Um, here, these elements are going to be six millimeter, and these are going to be for um, a little M6 bolt or quarter inch bolt, and um, near enough the same size. And this is, and then I'm going to have the coax running up here, um, cable tied again, zip tied, and then I'm going to have two ring connectors coming off there, and I'm going to have it waterproofed uh, with liquid electrical tape again. So, I just want to give you a quick um, uh, kind of how to make. I'm not going to show you every detail but because it's, it's going to be quite self-explanatory. Um, so let's get started. So I, I have to have a sheet of this plastic. I don't know what it is. It's, it's very light anyway. I don't know what type of plastic it is. Imagine it's HDPE or LDPE or something. But And because I've used it already, it, it seems to be working alright. So as I say, that's what I've got to hand. Um, so that's what I'm using. You can see it's quite thin. So all right, let's 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 stick it. Let's stick it to uh, here. Stick this down on here. Right. I'm not f fussy if there's a little bit overspill of the of the glue. It's water based, so it just washes off, and I'm going to wash it off regardless. Bit more. You want to make sure it's all covered though so it doesn't come off. You don't have to do this. Um, you could just mark it out, you know, longhand. Um, but I've made these templates up in uh, just some free CAD software. And it just makes it a little bit neater. So there we have, so there we've got our template stuck on our bit of plastic. And this template will be um, sacrificial. Alright, so... Let's take it over to the uh, the bandsaw now, um, and then we'll cut it out. Right, so there we have our um, our bit of plastic, and we used our bit of tape to cut it. It's not the most accurate, but it, it really doesn't need to be. And I, I wouldn't like to guess what weight's in that, but there, there's absolutely nothing in that. It's so light. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give it a quick deeper. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, I'm just taking the worst of it away. So there we go. There's our, there's our T-shape. Now we want to um, oops, I'll do this edge. Now we want to drill some holes. Um, so let's do that. 
So this is the, the wire that I'm going to use. This is just relatively cheap. Um, I think they call it control cable, control cable or control wire, something like that. PVC coated wired, and this is 0.75 millimeter. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna eye, eye up the size of the, the, the uh, drill that I need. And I think this is a three and a half millimeters. So it's that three and a half, just a little bit over a quarter inch. And now I'm just gonna drill some holes. I think plastic chopping board, plastic chopping board would be much too heavy. You see how much thicker it is, but it's not that dense. So you you would get away with it if you wanted to use that type of thing. Um, so for these are going to be for the cable ties. Um, so I'm going to need at least at least a four and a half, if not a five, for that. So that's our holes for the elements and then our holes for the coax. Now I just need to put um, 6mm in for um, the bolts. So here we go, I'm just going to give these a beauty bar. So you can see on the back there. Sometimes you can get away with just peeling this off now, now that we've drilled the holes. It's a really good method this for um, marking things. You know, if only we had a CNC, we all had CNC machines, we could just program, program it all. See, sometimes that's what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nip into the house, I'm just going to get some warm water, I'm going to clean it off, which will wash the glue off, and that will leave our, um, our feed point. So there we go, that's our finished plate. Holes drilled, really, really simple. Um, as I say, I've just given it a little clean off with warm water and it's just taken off the, um, the glue. Um, right, so I'll try and show you what I actually want to do now. So what I want to do is, I've got M6 bolts. I'll do this, do this first, make sure we can see that. Or maybe that's a bit easier. So two M6 bolts, three there in the middle. Right, and then so for our three elements, now bear in mind, I'm only going to use the 20, 20 meter one, but I want the future proof. So there's one element, there's two element, and there's three element. So the little ring connector. Then we need another, which would probably go in first. That goes like that. So that goes to our coax feed. Um, do I have enough here? Anyway, you'd see the same on the other side. That would go to the element, and that would go to the coax feed. Hopefully you can see that. I'll try and bring it up. Something like so. Okay, now, that's that. Check that our wire goes through. Um, wire goes through. Yeah, there's a little bit of play there. So what we'll do is, you can see I've, I've used this piece as a test piece and there's a knot there. So the knot will stop the, um, the tension being put on, tension being put on the ring connector. And all we do is then we'll trim that back and then we'll then solder that on there. But that won't get done until later. Um, but what I can do just now um, is I could actually make up the um, the coax cable. Um, so let me let me get that stuff out. Now, when it comes to coax choice, um, I've got two two main options here. I would have liked to have used this stuff. This is an offcut of Messi and Poloni. Um, I think this is Hyperflex Five Crystal. I think it's called. Um, quite expensive coax, really, really nice. I use this for my patch patch leads, but I need a piece that's approximately two meters long, so I'm not going to use that. So it's just not just not long enough. So I need to put that to the side. Um, this will ultimately be um, what I'm going to use, but I'm not using it just now. This is a very similar coax to RG142, 
This is actually called DXW142FEP. Now this this is extremely high power handling uh, coax, um, RG58 size. So this will take you know a couple of couple of kilowatt at, um, at 10 meters, you know, quite quite easily. Um, so I think that's what I'm probably going to use longer term. Um, but I can swap that over easy enough, so I'm not going to use that at the minute. What I'm actually going to use is good old RG58, and this is some quite nice RG58. Um, this is not just your cheap, nasty stuff here, it's a, it's a decent grade of RG58, and I quite like it because it's nice and uh, it's quite um, stiff, quite strong. It's not like the some of the rubbish I've seen in the past. You now, I bought this from uh, brought it from Martin Lynch. Um, I actually wanted the Messi and Poloni um, RG58, I asked for that, but they sent me this stuff. So I'm not quite sure if that's what it is or not, but I don't think so, otherwise it would have MNP stamped on it. But nevertheless, it's quite nice coax, and for 2 meters that I'm going to need, it's going to be more than ample, and it's still going to handle more power than I need. So with our coax cut, I now need to, um, I need, now need to strip back of this, and what I want to then do is fit on our, uh, our ring connectors. Right, so now we've got our um, coax stripped. So now I need now need to add these um, these ring connectors to each one of those. So that's what I'll do now. Um, and after I do that, oops. After I do that, I'll uh, I'll then solder them. That's these um, ring connectors now being crimped on. Using these, absolutely brilliant. And these are really cheap, just off Amazon, but uh, they work really well. And they even work on power pole connectors, funnily enough. That's it. Job done. Coincidentally, if you're looking for a soldering iron or butane torch, this is one that I can uh, wholeheartedly recommend. This is actually my third one. Um, the first one I had, I dropped off a roof. So that was the end of that. The second one, I actually still have it, but um, the tip was really starting to go. Um, and you know what, I thought I would just buy another one because, um, you know, two is one and one is none. So there's our solder connection and that's, that's pretty neat. Yeah, if I can get that to focus, yeah, I'm really quite happy with that. So that's then going to go onto here. Um, and I think I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll just fit it and then I'll, I'll put on the, uh, I think I'll then put on the coax seal. Um, yeah, because then it's in position and I'm, then the seal, the seal, the rubber sealers, rubber sealant type stuff's not going to get cracked. So that's what I'll do. Right, so we're going to fit this um, to the board. Um, actually, do these cable ties I have here fit? Yeah, they'll be good. So what I'll do. I don't want to put that too tight at the minute there, so there's just a little bit of tension on that. Let's cable up a bit. So there we go. So these just need to now spread out. Put these in position. And then from the back, we'll just bring our M6. cap screw. I might actually have shorter ones of these. I think these are 20s. I think I maybe got 16s or 12s. Um, Somewhere. These are actually M6 by 8s I ordered by accident. I wanted to get 12s or 16s but anyway I ordered the wrong thing. But they might actually fit through. Yeah. Yeah they'll do. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to put a wing nut on here to hold it in place. Now, on the other end of this, I'm going to put a, an SO239 and then onto that I'm going to put a GM3 SEK choke. Now I've seen a couple of other people and they've used this method for their moxin, so that's why I'm going to try it because it's the simplest way, um, but we'll just have to wait and see. And there isn't a lot of weight in that. Remember, once, uh, once, once I'm using it with the elements on it, these will come off and I'll use little um, M6 half nuts. Yep, these are 
M6 nuts, but they're they're half the width, hence why they call them a half half nut or a, a lock nut, more commonly known as. So these will go on here instead of the wing nuts, because the wing nuts are adding a little bit of weight to it. So what I think I'll do now is before I add the liquid electrical tape, is I think I'll add the um, the SO239 um, onto here. So now I need to find that somewhere. So that's now our um, end uh, prepared and for the SO239. So now I'm going to solder it. You want. There you go, easy as that. Can we see that? Can you see where that's soldered? Hard to see, it's quite stiff clark that. Right, so there's our um, SO239 connector on there. Um, what we'll do, I'll get the multimeter out and I'll just give it a little check. Just to make sure it's alright. Fine, I think. Perfect. Right, so the last thing I want to do with this is I just want to get some of this um, liquid electrical tape on, um, and after that, that's that's going to be the job finished. Um, I'm not going to get the elements on for a little while. I've got a little bit more testing to do with the antenna, and um, just about getting the tension on the poles correct. If you've been watching the previous videos. Um, so really this is just going to be made, it's just going to sat and then eventually um, once I get the tension right on the poles that's when I'm going to install this 20 meter band um, mono band on its own and then we'll look at introducing 15 and 10. They give you this little brush but it um, it's not the greatest and it's not the most precise so I, I just use something else, screwdriver or... So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover this in here. And there we are. So there's our feed point, and uh, for me that's kind of good as finished. Um, and really, there's not a lot of weight in that, as I've kept on saying. So, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully that's been um, worth a watch to some of you. Um, so yeah, so this is going to sit now until we get the tension. So as I said, sorted out on the poles. Um, once we do that, we'll then look about uh, uh, swapping it over. Um, because obviously on the shorter one we don't have a connection on it um, but this one we do um, so that's the one that we're going to use all right folks 73 i'll catch you in the next video